going on everybody welcome to the channel again um, before we get into this project today I want to know what your guys' thoughts on this are because I am convinced that every truck I have ever owned call me crazy but I believe the thing has a soul okay the re reason I say that about this one is yesterday after work got off work it was beautiful outside decided for the first time this year I could roll all the windows down drive home just enjoy myself got halfway home and I got the smell and anybody that's ever gotten the smell knows what I'm talking about um, see I was having a good enough time that this corner right here the brake caliber decided to hang don't know why I just did the brakes are in good shape they're not that old but caliper decided to hang up so what we need to do today one of many things but what you're gonna see is uh, we got calipers we got pads and rotors we're gonna throw in front of this thing and uh, get it back to where it should be because I need it so we're gonna get this one fixed today. I'm gonna show you how to do it and how I do it. Um, I know a lot of people don't do it this way, but I I do. And I'll show you why. So I get this thing jacked up and get the tires off. We'll go from there. And oh, also the other depressing part about this, I'm not trying to boast or anything, but between Mac and Snap-on, I have enough tools of my own where I work to make this super, super simple. But my home game is, uh, it's sad. And you guys might have seen that with uh, some of our other projects so far. But we, uh, we're we going to make the best of what we got. So, again, I'm going to show you guys how that's done. Let's get this thing jacked up, get the tires off of it and uh, see what we can do from there. Like I had mentioned before, I'm going to show you guys one side, I'm going to show you how I do the one side, why I do it the way I do it. Um, a lot of people will not break the caliper apart. I do every single time I touch brakes because there's pins in here, guide pins or whatever you want to call them, and you need to go through and you need to grease those really good every time. So that's why I break the caliper apart every time. Even though I'm putting new calipers on, I'm still going to take the caliper apart because I also don't want to break the brake line loose until I absolutely have to. First thing we're going to do is there's two, looks like, those are not 16s. Oh wow, 13s. Two 13 millimeter bolts will hold the caliper to the caliper bracket. We'll break those loose. Okay, now that we have the bolts out of the caliper, the caliper would be free if it wasn't froze up. Usually I would have <clears throat> like a, uh, usually I'd have a normal, just a little pry bar. Uh, I'm gonna try to get this in there, this crow's foot, because that's what I have. And I'm gonna pull tension on the caliper to get it to collapse. Okay. You see now the caliper's real loose. And mind you guys, since I'm changing everything, I'm changing the calipers, the pads, the rotors, everything. I am not going to be as careful with this stuff as one might be, but prying on the caliper like we just did to 
get the pistons to suck back in the caliper is not going to hurt anything. So don't be worried about that. So we're going to take that, take the speed sensor wire out of the brake line just to prevent any weird things. Like if the caliper falls, you don't want it to break your speed sensor cable. Now on these Dodges, I'll show you guys putting them in more than taking them apart, but you have to slip it in and then throw it over. It's got little anchors down here on the bottom of the caliper on top it goes in so this should just pull out again I'm not gonna worry too much because oh my bad it's on the bottom see like that we're gonna change everything don't worry about that put the caliper up somewhere safe to where it's not gonna fall what you should do is use a bungee cord to tie it to something like coil spring or whatever you have available. I'm not because I've put them there before and I know if I'm careful I won't fall. <laughs> so you can see by these pads, these pads are in good shape as far as meat goes. But the reason I'm changing the pad, aside from the fact the caliper locked up, is once you get pads hot, I'll show you. <laughs> Once you get pads hot and you actually start to bake them, see how they see how they chip apart real easy. What you what you did? What you you cooked the brake pad? It's not going to work like it should. It's going to make a bunch of noise. You just change them. If if you if the brake caliper sticks, change the brake pads because they. Even though this will damage a new brake pad, I can assure you, this one is cooked and garbage. It's no good. So, we have to change both brake pads. <laughs> and same with rotors. I mean, I probably could have gotten away with running these rotors. But when you get a rotor hot enough, it'll actually check, you know, crack. And uh, the same thing, I mean, they're just, you get them too hot and you're just going to have issues. So rather than taking a risk, I'm going to go ahead and just change it. Just get rid of this one. Uh, it's, it's a bit cheap investment when it comes to safety. Uh, there's two things I won't mess with as far as cutting corners and one of them is brakes. So... Next, I'm going to take my breaker bar, and even though this is the wrong size, because it should be, or it is an 18, and I'm using a 19. Oh, I need to find the right one. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. <clears throat> okay, remember how I told you my, uh, my home junk sucked? Yeah, I don't have an 18 millimeter socket. These are an 18. Okay, don't do that. Get the right thing. 18 millimeter socket. So. Get back down here. And your breaker bar. Crack socket. One loose. My goodness.
now that part's done, let's get into our new parts. So we have our brake rotors, just a little brake rotor and some special. looking for when you go to put your rotors on or your calipers not rotors your bleeder goes on top okay so if you imagine on that one there it's gonna be sitting like this the bleeders on the bottom so that is wrong you want to make sure when you return your cores the right core goes in the right box Okay, now after fighting all that for way too long, we have our caliper bracket on, we have our new rotor on, time to put the brake pads on. So they will come with new sliders. So these are, this is a slider, this is what I call a slider, and this is what the brake caliper or the brake pad rides on. So. What we need to do is you'll notice there's a top and a bottom. Your bottom goes down here like so. That's a bottom. And your top is going to go on here like that. And then your brake pad. Which you'll notice on these, one brake pad has a squeaker, one does not. I personally like to put the squeakers, see your main direction of rotation is this way. I like to put your squeaker, I'm going to use this pad, now I'm going to use, yeah this pad. I like to put the squeaker on top of your rotation. It's going to be the last thing to touch. And the reason I do that is when this hits the rotor, it makes a god awful noise. So you want it to make as much noise as possible. And I've noticed that on top, where it's trying to drag it, it makes a lot more noise as if it's on bottom and it's trying to push it. So these will just slide into place. I'll take a little playing around, but they will slide right into place. Like so. Take the pad without the squeaker. Put it here. Like so. Okay.
Okay, and sometimes, like this one, the rotor's trying to fight me, so sometimes it's nice to put a lug nut back on to kind of keep it in check. So, now, we want to put the main piece of the caliper on. And if you look at the caliper, so this is the top, so it's going to sit like this, right? See how this side just has the one tab? And this side's got like a, it's almost like a hook. It's going to hook like that. Now the last step to do is to put your new brake or your brake line on your new caliper. So what you should be getting with your new calipers is a new banjo bolt. This is what lets the brake fluid into your caliper from the line. You're also going to get two little washers, little copper washers. Those need to go on top and on bottom, sandwiching the the fitting. When we take the new one off or the old one off. You do not reuse copper washers. Okay, so I told you there, there was a reason that this is what I wait to do for the last thing. I do not take the brake line off until I absolutely have to. One, because it's messy, and two, it's just more of a pain than it's worth. So, what I'll do, it's easier with this than a lot of things, is I'll put the brake caliper somewhere where I can pry on it. I'll find the right size, which I should have done ahead of time. Right enough. Break this loose. automatically it starts to leak and I hate brake fluid of all the things I don't like getting on myself it's brake fluid okay get rid of the old bolt Okay, old bolt comes off, make sure the old copper comes off. Like I said before, we do not reuse copper washers, ever. So, you put your new bolt and your copper on. I should probably wipe that off. New copper goes on the bottom, like so, and then the brake line goes back in the caliper. A lot of times, this will leak a lot, so you want to be quick. This one didn't, which makes me feel like bleeding It's going to be different than I usually do, which I was hoping to show you guys how I gravity bleed first and then go to uh, the pump method, which takes two people, because I obviously don't have a bleeder. But um, I know on the Fords, because that's what I mainly work on, aside from this thing, when you take the brake line off, it seems to flow pretty free from the master cylinder. So what I'll do while I'm working on the other side is I'll crack my bleeder. Obviously, take your cap off, but crack your bleeder. 
and just kind of let it drip in and then keep an eye out when it starts dripping out of your bleeder then close it off finish what you're doing do the same on the other side and then have someone help you finish bleeding and it usually takes only a couple pumps and then all your air is out um, so this one's going to be more difficult not really difficult it's just going to take two people no problem but that is one side all right guys a little time has passed as you can see we got both sides on that side that side went ahead got them on and uh So we got them on, uh, we got a little bit of help bleeding the brakes. We already did that. Um, sorry if you guys wanted to see that. If you do, I guess we could always make another video about bleeding brakes and different methods. Um, just have to let me know now. No, let me know down in the comment section. But um, I think this is where I'm going to end off because all I need to do is put tires back on and you guys shouldn't need to be bored with that. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, liking the videos and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, hey, I want to thank you guys because it, it, it means a lot that you guys watch these. So we will see you on the next one.